everyone, today's video is on gastric neuroendocrine tumors, or NETs, N-E-T. Uh, and if you're like me, you probably get tripped up with all the different types of rare gastric tumors. Um, they can be easily confused with each other. So today we're going to try to specifically draw out what are neuroendocrine tumors and then go into the specifics of the different types and how they're treated. So first, um, let's talk about what NETs are not. So when we're talking about a gastric NET, what we are not talking about is a gastric adenocarcinoma. Adenocarcinoma are, of course, cancers arising from the epithelial lining of the GI tract. So this is a distinct entity. And they're also not a gastric gist. These are gastrointestinal stromal tumors of the stomach. They arise from the stroma, uh, typically from the interstitial cells of Cajal. So again, we are not talking about either of these when we talk about gastric nets. And so when we talk about gastric nets, where do these tumors come from? And they come from a rarely discussed cell called the enterochromaffin cell or the EC cell. So these are neuroendocrine cells uh, that basically act as a bridge between the lumen of the gut, shown up here, uh, and then the extensive enteric nervous system down here. Of course, no nerves pass through the mucosal barrier to sample the gut lumen itself. So we have to have cells that sample this lumen and then secrete um, hormones or neurotransmitters to communicate with the enteric nervous system. And the cells that do that, as you can see here in the green, are those EC cells. Um, as you'll note, they often secrete serotonin or 5-HT, which is how um, when these sorts of tumors metastasize to the liver, they can cause the carcinoid syndrome. So there are three types of gastric neuroendocrine tumors, and these are treated very differently from a surgical perspective. So we want to have a good handle on all three types. The first type um, is driven by gastrin. And so it starts with atrophic gastritis, which is just an end-stage clinical entity when the stomach has been inflamed for a long amount of time, so gastritis. And this inflammation leads to atrophy. So the stomach atrophies and loses a lot of its function, especially that of its secreting glandular cells. Um, so in this state, the stomach is secreting relatively little acid. Um, of course, we know that gastrin leads to acid secretion. So the stomach senses this low acid state and then secretes a great deal of gastrin to try to increase acid production. Um, unfortunately, a side effect of that high gastrin is stimulation of the EC cells themselves. Uh, if this stimulation happens for a prolonged period of time, you get overgrowth of those EC cells, and then you get development of gastric neuroendocrine tumors. The second type is similar. It's also gastrin-driven, but in this case, the underlying cause is a gastrinoma. Um, you might remember this as being known as ZE syndrome or Zollinger-Ellison syndrome. Um, of course, this gastrinoma secretes high levels of gastrin, which again stimulates the EC cells and leads to proliferation and tumor development, leading to a gastric neuroendocrine tumor. So like I said, these are both gastrin-driven. They're also both fairly indolent as they are driven by factors outside the EC cells themselves. Now, type 3 is different. So 3 is sporadic. Um, I've heard surgical oncologists refer to this as real cancer. Um, and they are also by far the most aggressive. So remember these two, gastrin-driven, indolent, type 3, sporadic, and most aggressive, most like, uh, quote, real cancer. If we're talking about frequency, uh, type 1 makes up about 75% of gastric neuroendocrine tumors. Type 2, gastric neuromas are, of course, extremely rare, so that's only 5%. And the sporadic is roughly 20% of neuroendocrine tumors. So now when we talk about treatment, it should be no surprise that the treatment splits pretty significantly between the gastrin driven and the uh, more malignant types of neuroendocrine tumors. So for type one, this um, type that is related to atrophic gastritis and the chronic low secretion of gastric acid leading to the hypergastrin state, in type 1, you can actually just observe these if they're small and asymptomatic, or if they become symptomatic, you can just do limited endoscopic resections, where GI just endoscopically resects these during upper endoscopies. And then for type 2, um, you again want to deal with the hypergastrin state if you can. So in this case, if you resect the gastrinoma itself, you will treat the um, gastric neuroendocrine tumor. Of course, if you do that and they persist or they are just symptomatic regardless, you can also perform an endoscopic resection. Now, type 3, on the other hand, remember this is real cancer. This is going to get a real cancer operation. So they're going to need a radical resection with a partial or total gastrectomy, depending on the tumor size and location, and then an associated lymphadenectomy. 
And if you need adjuvant therapy afterwards, remember this is just like any other neuroendocrine tumor of the intestines, you can treat that with octreotide. And if they're symptomatic and resectable, you can also, in certain situations, do surgical resection of metastases, especially those of the liver. So to review, um, NETs are distinct from other entities like adenocarcinoma or GISTs of the stomach. Um, they're related to proliferation of the EC cells. Um, and again, these cells are neuroendocrine cells that transmit signals from the gut lumen uh, to the enteric nervous system. There are three types and these roughly split um, treatment wise between types one and two, which are gastrin driven and type three, which is sporadic and aggressive. The more indolent tumors can be managed with observation or limited endoscopic resection, or in rare cases such as ZE syndrome with treatment of the underlying hypergastrin state, whereas type three um, need to be treated with an oncologic resection, uh, plus or minus adjuvant therapy and octreotide. That's it. These videos are for educational purposes only. Do not use to diagnose or treat any disease. This is not clinical advice, and we will see you next time.